Hello and welcome. We are the Sisters of the Holy Fiber. This is episode 19, possibly, and my name is Devin, also known as Rambunctious Guy. And I'm Heather, also known as Tiny Kiwi. So grab your knitting or crochet or whatever you're working on and join us while we craft and chat. And welcome to our first time viewers. Thanks for stopping by. And to our returning viewers, thanks for tuning in again. What are and you working on this week? Brain problems. No, um, I'm, I, look what I turned my little mouse into. Oh. He's got a darning needle in his head. He does. I had to transport this huge old needle and I was like, it's metal. I'm going to jab myself. So I stuffed it in his head so that I could carry it carefully in my purse without jabbing myself. Anyway, what am I working on? I don't even know what I'm working on. It's this stupid triangle. I'm tired of looking at it. I stuffed it in my bag and forgot it for like three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm going back to that. That's what I'll be hopefully, fingers crossed, finishing today. It's just a stupid granny square, but I'm tired of looking at it. So... That's all I'm working on. What about you? It's the shawl of doom. 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 <laughs> okay. No, um, not the shawl of doom. Um, uh, not ha- much has happened since the last time I talked to you. I mean, it doesn't look like that much. It's been a lot of work, but um, just this top part I'm going to show you. I don't know if it's going to come out very well. But it's this really cool mesh, lacy bit, at the top here. Oh, that is nice. I really like it, and it was super fun to make. Looks like it. I wish the whole shawl was this. It's pretty. Uh, I love you, but you can make it that way. I know. Uh, I am thinking about making another shawl, like, with this pattern. Good idea. Just like this pattern over and over again uh i'm not sure though yet so we'll see but i had fun making that part i'm on the second color exclusively now so i did the transitioning already Uh uh-huh you you know you can kind of see it it's kind of a little stripey yeah but um it's still really pretty and i love the colors and i'm on a knit around for forever row so i'm gonna work on that (laughs) while we're podcasting Sounds good. Uh, that's the only thing that I'm actively working on. Well, you said you have FOs this week, so I let's do. Yeah, it's so <laughs> rare. I know. We. I thought about saving them, but I have. I have three. Confetti, confetti. <laughs> oh, you got the starfish done. I did. So this is the front. Uh, this is literally its main function in life is to be decorative on top of a bottle. We're classy here, so we have beer bottles, but you could be more classy and have wine bottles if you wanted. Um, Also functions well as a cat toy, which is why um, I made the back part. I made another one because my cat liked it, so he got the the other one. But, um, so that's one FO, but I don't have it to show you, but that's another finished object that I made. But I'm super proud of this because I made it up mostly, and, uh, the... One of the people in our Slytherin nest Mm -hmm. on Ravelry, uh, I posted a picture of what it looked like. And she said, well, I think it was probably made by doing this. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I kind of followed the general uh, idea that she kind of laid out. And it worked really well. Good. And then I wrote down, I wrote it all down, too. And it's in my project notes. So if Mm -hmm. anybody's curious about... Making a starfish with bobbles on it that you can put on top of a bottle. It's in my notes. And uh, I made that. And then, okay, I participated in the first round of Quidditch. Mm-hmm. And I really wanted to participate in the second round, too. Mm-hmm. So, uh, just, like, I was so... I felt like part of the team. <laughs> I gotta be... <laughs> I gotta make a goal. <laughs> Yeah, I know, and I really wanted to, like, get my hat done for that, but I just didn't get it done in time, so now I'm, yeah. like, locked out of playing Quidditch, and I'm super sad. But I'm not. Oh! So, That's... I made a preemie hat, 
this is yarn that I got in a swap. Uh, she just gave me um, about twice as much as it took to make this, so I can make another one with the oh, yarn nice. that I have left over. And it's mm -hmm. such cute yarn. It's so, like, really? That's all the same yarn? But <laughs> yeah, this is all from the same yarn. <laughs> My partner's like, hey, I like that. I want like those. I'm like, I'm <laughs> having off. I gotta finish the other ones. I'm not even working. It's not even on my whips list, the socks I'm making for you. <laughs> but I turn my, my, they're right here, by the way. Okay. They're still here. I just haven't turned the heel. I really, I just have to pick up right here. It yeah. hasn't happened. That's okay. So I, it's over in timeout. So in I the perma like whips it. land. Yeah. In the land of every whip. It went into the land of whips. So, yeah. uh, so I was really happy, like, that I got something made and that it's for charity, and right. I don't know, it made me feel good. And I right. wouldn't have done it without the Quidditch yes. thing. So, yeah. And um, because my life was hard, <laughs> I sat on the beach and made this. <laughs> <laughs> Violins! <laughs> so it was a really nice day, and um, yeah, I just cast it on and, and made it all while sitting on the beach, and then somebody was like, I'm hungry, and I'm like, I need half an hour to finish this. <laughs> that's awesome. So, You're like, that's all for my FOs. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yay! I actually have an FO this week, too. We're Yay! like, uh, we're in FOs. So, I finally got the hat finished. Yay! Hey, it's cool! It's a, hat. it's a hat. It's, like, not nearly so slouchy as I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to have to make... Uh, you know, modifications to the pattern if I want to make another one. And I think I might, because it was pretty, it was actually pretty easy, which is pretty sad that it took me so long to finish, but it's done. Yay, it's done. It's a hat. And it actually, like, fits on my head. Hey, it's actually a hit. Okay, this is not how you wear it, but <laughs> as long as it goes on my head, I was, like, pretty worried about that because my bind, uh, my bind off, my cast on was pretty tight. Mm-hmm. Even though I do the double needle technique where you buy, you, uh, I keep wanting to say bind off. You cast on over two needles mm -hmm. as I'm a really, I don't know, not really, really tight, but I'm a pretty tight knitter, knitter so it helps me, uh, start off on the right foot. And, uh, I was still kind of worried that it was going to be too tight to get on my head. So I was like, it's a very large preemie hat. <laughs> or a dizzy okay. child hat. Huh? It's like time to learn how to steak and make it into two hats. <laughs> I don't know, so I'm glad that fit that works. But I don't even want to touch it now. It's full and it's making me hot just looking at it. Oh, look at me, I'm sweating. I'm sweating already. Wool in the summer, not a good plan. So it's acrylicsville over here. But that's my fo, and that's it for fos for this week. Yay, we have fos. It's amazing. Woohoo! Yay! So I hate to say it, but our next segment is Brainy Moments. And I hate to say it because I still haven't got around to getting my video posted. But this week, it'll be posted. You know I already it's ready for you, right? I know, it okay. is. I just haven't got around to it. I just wanted to make sure that... that's Because I'm lazy. So... <laughs> well, if you take long enough, I'll just post it. <laughs> There you go. Hey. Good enough. Done. Bam. Brainy moment for this week. Tune it in. It's a separate video if you want to learn how to make a ring in tatting. So speaking of brainy moments, have you gotten your buttonhole tutorial put up? Oh, hush you. I don't know. I just was say <laughs> we're so bad. We are so bad. Uh, but I have another brainy moment. Oh, okay. I'll take it. Whatever brainy moments you've got. But uh, it does, it's really just a kind of recap of what I was talking about earlier, um, <laughs> that if you don't know how to make something, you can always ask. Mm -hmm. I was uh, surprised, pleasantly surprised by how helpful people were when I asked, like, hey, crocheters, how would I make this? Mm -hmm. I thought it was going to be really complicated, but it wasn't. And a kind of non-crocheter like me was able to figure it out, so... Uh, it was just very nice and community building. So, Yay. Yeah. It's the power of Ravelry. 
Yeah. Oh, so you I'm can... trying so hard to convert the ladies in my knit group, and I've at least got one of them like looking at patterns on Ravelry, which is you know like the gateway drug. It's like the patterns <laughs> searching. The pattern search. Yeah. So I think I have one person hooked at least, or, you know, at least brave enough to click around and try out Ravelry, you know, it's like, there's so much to do on there that it's, I can see it's overwhelming, especially when you barely like computers to begin with. Mm -hmm. So, but I tried to keep it simple, but you know how I I had a Hermione moment and I just couldn't stop, you know. (sighs) Oops. Yeah. Well, hopefully at least one of them is using Ravelry now, so, Mm -hmm. and... She'll get the other ones to use the pattern search too, and Whoa. next thing you know we're all on Ravelry. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I don't know, probably, probably not, but but it was pretty awesome to be able to like go into Ravelry and click on my projects notebook, and because it was on this huge computer at the volunteer room, mm-hmm. it's like all my projects showed up, and I was like, this is all thanks to the Harry Potter group. Otherwise, I would have never finished anything. <laughs> Thanks, guys. So yeah, awesome. and uh, I, I just think it's you know, and it's also kind of one of those ask for help when you need it things too. You yeah, know? yeah. If you can ask for help, then you're you'll be able to um, do more things that way. Like I wouldn't have been able to figure it out. Yeah, I've never done a bobble ever, not in knitting or crochet. I because never will. Who, oh. I don't do bobbles and clothing, and I mostly make clothing. Yeah. And so I would not have even thought, oh, like, I should look up how to make a bobble. Right. Like, that would be how to do this, you know. So, and not only that, then she pointed, then she linked to uh, a good video. So, like, what if I had figured out it was bobble and then Googled crochet bobble? Well, then a billion things that are not helpful would have come up, you know. Right. But she already knew where to point me in the right direction. Yay. Appoint me spell. Was that cube And I guess jelly? I could, uh, I'll link to the bobble video. Hmm. Was that cube, cube Jelly who was helping you, or yeah. is it someone else? Yeah. Yeah. She's very helpful. Mm-hmm. Cool beans. I'd like to think it's only the Slytherins that are that helpful. Okay, uh-huh. yeah, it's totally not. It's the no, whole cup. I know. We're all pretty awesome. I can't lie. Yeah. I'm really sad that I missed out on Quidditch. Oh, I just didn't get it together in time to stay okay. in. There's lots of other things to do. I know, and I haven't even got my classes turned in, so I don't know what I'm bemoaning. I really just, I haven't even turned that hat in. And I've got, oh, I don't even know, four or five days left? Yeah. You need to get that turned in. I know. Next segment. Next segment. I have no idea what it is. What is it? Shiny. Do you have any shiny? Do I have shiny? Uh, no. Do you? <laughs> I don't think I do either, so moving right along. Right along. What is our next segment? A good thing I wrote it down at some point. Hyperventilate! What are you hyperventilating over? Zelda. Yes. <laughs> so, A++ on the game's ratings. Oh, it's so much fun! <laughs> okay, it's fun, but it's also frustrating. Because yeah. I don't know where everything is yet. So right. now I'm just like, where is the next level? I can't find the next gosh darn castle. So Zelda, if you've never played the original Zelda, you just kind of wander around until you find out what you're supposed to do. <laughs> and if you don't know where you're supposed to go, you're just left wandering around in La La Land. And um, I was really bad at it at first. I kept dying. It was like, mm-hmm. I need to stab you, but that means I need to get close to you, and then I die. Oh, no. <laughs> so, that has a problem. <laughs> it was a little bit problem-making. Uh, <laughs> but I'm a little better now. And Yay. Not quite so bad. But uh, it was fun. Uh, I think Terry's also enjoying it a lot. She's okay. probably played more than I have. That's awesome. But it was it's been fun. So, um I am excited to, I think I'm more excited to play, like, the games that come next. Mm-hmm. So, we'll see. What about you? Um, I don't have anything that, that I can think of. I'm still kind of excited for Constantine, but I haven't looked it up because I've been worried. You know, I'm, I feel the same way about that as I do about 
Maleficent. Like, yeah. I really, I really, really want it to be good. Well, and especially in the case of Maleficent, I don't think it's going to be. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, <sighs> Maleficent is like one of my favorite villains of all time. Mm-hmm. Like, forever. She is pretty cool. She's so cool. I, think I was going to say something scene. else, but it's a PG podcast. Oh, yeah. Well, her color scheme, I think, was what won me over it to begin with. Because, well, I mean, I'm wearing green nails now. Um, but, yeah. Just brilliant choice of character design for her, I think. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I'm really trepidatious. I don't even... I'm kind of like... At this point, I need to either just decide I'm going to go and just expect that it's going to be bad and just go before you can hear all the horrible reviews, <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. Before the reviews come out and everyone's like, it was awful. Uh, or just accept that it's going to be horrible and never go. So I'm still kind of quaffly, quaffly land. I don't know. There's the off chance it could be great and I'm missing yeah. out on something, but um, I'm not holding my breath. Yeah, I mean, it's like, it seems like a good idea, but I think it was done with the purposes of capitalism in mind, so, and usually that doesn't make for a good movie, and I don't know, it's just... Yeah. And I know a lot of people are not fond of Angelina Jolie, but I don't actually mind her. I just, Mm -hmm. when they put her in a movie, it could be... That, you know, so oftentimes they put her in there to make do with a really bad script and, you know, they're using her as a big name to draw some, you know, people into a movie that otherwise they wouldn't come to. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. I want it to be good. I really want it to be good so badly. You have no idea. Oh, yes, I do. Okay, but... <sighs> and the Maleficent t-shirts that I have had for, like, I don't know, ten years or something... I've had these shirts for forever. Mm-hmm. So she's my favorite villain. And I'm, like, so worried about wearing them now because people are going to think I'm endorsing the movie. Yeah. If it well, turns but out they're, to... like, original. I know. They're the cartoon ones. How is that endorsing the movie? I have no idea. It's not. Well, you can still wear your shirts. I have a shirt that says Old Wicked. Old school forever. On. Sorry. Yes, it's okay. I have a shirt that says Wicked on it, and it has, um... The Queen from Snow White uh, at a little patch on the bottom. And I've had that for longer than I've had the Maleficent shirts. And that was before the Wicked um, uh, musical. It, that is a musical, isn't it? Yes. Where it's like, yeah, I thought it was a musical. Yeah. The play. Anyway, so people think that, that my shirt is re- referring to the play, but I've had that shirt for longer than the play was even in existence. So, another thing. Stop ruining my shirts, Disney. Actually, yeah, that wasn't Disney. I don't know who owns them. But whatever. Totally tangenting. Sorry. That's the way that hyperventilating goes. Right along. Yeah, exactly. So the problem with hyperventilating is it takes you off into geeky land. Yes. And, you know, frothing at the mouth land. Is... Well, it's kind of why we have segments, so we get back somewhere. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Otherwise, who knows what we'd be talking about. Yes. Oh, I have no idea. Books. Have you any this week, madam? She shakes her head no. All right, well, I have one. Sorry, I was counting. I couldn't say anything. Oh, okay, but I assume you still don't have one. I That's correct. I do not. Okay. So I thought I would show off this very handy, um, I don't know what you'd call it, stitch dictionary. It's not really a stitch dictionary. It's a how-to, what do you call it, technique book? What would you call it if it's just like, The basic crochet stitches. What made me think about it was um, your foray into bobbles, actually. Mm Because I was like, you know, I haven't even looked at how to make a bobble in forever because I hate bobbles. But there's a few things out there that I would probably put a bobble on. Starfish? Like a starfish. So uh, I was looking it up. Um, So I'll link to this book because it's super handy and it's very pictorial, which I love. This is the one I used to make my shell cowl. I'm trying to get the camera to nice. focus on it. I just really like having the picture guide versus, you know, having it written out and mud- trying to muddle through. Mm-hmm. So it's 120 crochet techniques. Yay! I'll link to it. I'll put the ISBN. 
But unfortunately, since it's a Japanese book, um, if you don't have access to a place to buy Japanese books, you'll have to buy it online somewhere. But I'll, I've been noticing that a lot of um, Japanese craft books are getting ending up on uh, Etsy. Oh. So I think people are finally seeing the need, you know, to connect. Like, I can't go on uh, Amazon's uh, Japanese site and buy books, but someone is in Japan and they can send it to me, you know, so. Right. Feeling in the gap. Which is especially helpful in case any of my bookstores go under, which is always a possibility. Mm-hmm. Our economy is so not great. It seems like always the niche stuff goes out. What's next? That's it. I have no more books. No, I mean, like, what's after books? I know, but I'm trying to think if I had another book, because I really oh, feel okay. like there was another. Oh, well, Whatever. If I remember it, I remember it. If not, it'll be next week's. I spy. And I have a story, so I get to go first this week. Yes! Yay! So, uh, finally have a, something to talk about. So, I was out <clears throat> at the historic garden that I was gardening at. And I have my headphones on, and I'm just, like, raking away. This is my raking motion, apparently. <laughs> and uh, I hear, like, a ruckus. Uh, with the crows going crazy, you know, and making their meow, meow, meows, and, you know, and, uh, ru- trees rustling, and, you know, bodies hitting each other and everything. So, um, a red-tailed hawk flies, like, right by me, maybe ten feet from me. Wow. And, uh, goes up and, you know, lands in another tree about maybe 40, 30 feet from me. And then, of course, the crows are sitting up on the top of the tree, you know, just harassing the hawk and, you know, yeah, 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 and get him. And <laughs> so I, I got a couple of pictures, but um, it was only with my phone, so I couldn't get a very good picture. I was really sad because I got super close to the bird when he was in the tree and the crows were harassing him. He wasn't going anywhere. Hmm. So I was probably, I don't know, maybe 15 feet from him. Nice. I didn't want to get too close and freak him out because he was already bothered by the crows and he's kind of small. I think he's an adolescent because he was pretty small. Um, But anyway, that was super cool and super exciting. Oh, and I saw little Phoebe. So cute. Oh, cute, cute. Yes. And I saw, what did I see? House sparrows and uh, finches. Um, I feel like there was somebody else too. Oh, well. I was mostly excited about the hawk because I love hawks. That's super neat. Yeah. And it was so close to me. I rarely get to see one so close. Mm -hmm. Because the trees at the garden are super tall. We have some really old pine trees and stuff. So usually the birds are way out of reach, you know. And, of course, I still have not, like, brought my binoculars because I'm, like, the lamest birder ever. It's mostly just they're in the garage and I don't have to dig through and find them. That's what happens when I put things away where they're supposed to go. Oh, you know. Anyway. So what did you see this week? Anything exciting? Not as exciting as dolphin babies, maybe, but... No, but still exciting. <laughs> I um, you about that. They're so cute. Well, exciting for me. I yeah. saw a um, redhead wood- woodpecker. Oh! In the I road. We were just in... standing in the road. Oh, I was like... Standing there. How this isn't a road deal story. Hop, 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 hopping away. <laughs> Why were you in the road, woodpecker? There's no wood in the road. Why are you crossing the road? Ah, he was really crossing the road. <laughs> what are you doing? It's like the strange ways of animals. I don't know. Yes. So Ooh, you saw sheep and goats. I forgot. Where did was, you see them? Um, at the county fair grounds. I, I was kind of sorry for them because their stalls weren't very clean. You know how that goes. Yes. But they were very cute, and they were well-fed, and they looked healthy, even though the stalls needed a little bit of love. So I, I didn't feel too bad for them, as I felt for some some circus animals or whatever. Or just, yeah, we won't go there. No. Uh, <clears throat> but the goats, I wanted to take the goat and just, like, oh. your little face is so cute. And it had, like, the little dangly things that hang from, like, the chin, you know, the little, I don't know what you call them, other yeah. than the no, it's like a waddle, though. It's because, like, the beard is, like, here, but they were, like, little tiny skin flaps on this oh, side. Oh, how cute. I don't, Old. I, I, I don't know. I gotta find out what those are called, because I have no idea. Old goat. Something, something I don't know. <laughs> Old goat waddles. 
I know. Well, if that's not what it's called, I'm petitioning to call it that. Yes. So, yes. Anyway. Sorry, I totally interrupted you because I got excited about sheeps and goats. <laughs> Uh, so, because I went out for a hike, and, uh-huh. uh, but I went out with some friends, and they were very, oh, excuse me, I'm very tired. Um, okay, hang in there. Went out with some friends, and they were very loud. Oh, so, okay. You know, if you go out hiking and are loud, you don't see anything. Yes. Well, you see the things that don't mind if you're there. You know, the things like bears that don't care. <laughs> Because a bear doesn't care whether you're there or not, really. Oh, I saw another cool thing. So I, I totally had a, an awesome week, and then I'm just, like, suddenly remembering everything I've seen. So I saw it was, like, it looked like a snake skin in the bush. Like, I was like, that looks like a lizard's tail. And I'm, like, following it along. I'm like, this is a very long lizard's tail. And I'm like, I'm going to move my hand back, because I don't know if this is an actual snake in the bush. But, uh... I, of course I didn't. So uh, I got closer to find out whether or not it was a living thing or not. <clears throat> you know, if it was just a skin. It was just, like, the outside skin of a lizard. I've never seen... It was like the tail itself was over a foot long. Wow. Which is why I was thinking it was a snake skin at first. But then I saw, like, the little feet part. Mm-hmm. You know, where the feet must have shed. I was like, I've never seen that before. You know, not in one whole piece. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, and there was like ants crawling inside of it like a tunnel. They were going from one place to the other, like inside the skin. It was the strangest, most surreal thing I've wow. seen. In- yeah, it was like, we're going to take the lizard skin tunnel. Doo, 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 doo. That's so funny. Isn't it weird? I just like, did the, did the poor thing like lose its head and die? Or is this like a shed skin? I don't know. It's, it was very strange. I didn't see the the real lizard, so I have no idea. Hmm. Very strange. Yeah, it was very strange. Cause why would it be in the bush unless it shed it? Like, it was, why would it, it die it, in the bush? Well, yeah, I don't know. And because like the from about the upper limbs up, the front four limbs was missing. So I figured maybe he really was just shedding and like rubbing into the bush to get his skin off or something and. And the top part didn't come off until later. Mm-hmm. So, unless he was a snack for one of the hawks or something, and he just got dropped in the bush, and well, yeah. Okay, I'm going to change the subject now because this is going to start to go into grossy, grossy land. <laughs> okay, moving on. Yeah, I was going to start saying things. Yeah, <laughs> maybe um, I shouldn't. Yeah, so I was like, uh, sorry, I forgot. Everyone's not like so cool, you know? Oh, science he's... nature. Yeah, uh, yeah. Not everyone uh, is uh, as awesomed out by nature as I am, so. As, as we are. Yeah, we are. We really are. Anyway, and I totally interrupted again. Oh my god, I'm the worst person ever. Okay, I'm gonna but zip I it. Zip it. I'm not, I, don't, I didn't see anything else exciting. And if I did, then and I suddenly remember it, I'll just sit here and go, mm, and make a weird face. <laughs> Until it's my turn again. Now I hope you remember something. <laughs> no. No thanks. I don't need to look like a silly person. Mm. Yeah, I know. My face of consternation. Ugh, this pattern is like the easiest, and yet it still drives me nuts. Anyway. So, at my <laughs> hike. Yes, the hike in which people were noisy, much to your chagrin. Yes. Yes. I didn't really see very much. I did see some lizards, and um, there is a hike called Rattlesnake Canyon, and I mm-hmm. thought it had no rattlesnakes in it, but somebody on this hike was like, I don't know who told you that, because I've seen rattlesnakes here, and I was like, oh! Now I really want to see a snake! Where's the snake? Is there a snake? snake? I want to see a snake! 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 Now I'm going to go back and try and see if I can find anybody. But, Sounds um, good. But nothing else was very exciting. See, it didn't even take me that long to finish. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I just got so excited. <laughs> I know. You know. You know how it goes. I do, and I do the exact same thing to you. I was so. going to say, and you're related to me. We do the same thing, so. Yeah. I get excited and talk over you, too, as I've done today. So As we do all the time. 
All right, next segment. Next segment. After I Spy is Ear Party. What have you been listening to? You go first. Okay. I have totally been enjoying Elliot Smith, um, which I just found out that he is not alive anymore. And so now I'm kind of bummed out because I was really digging all his music. <sighs> Isn't that always the way mm-hmm. with these singer-songwriter types? I don't know why. Anyway, he's kind of um, indie, like indie pop or sort of uh, lo-fi, depending on what song he's singing. Um, I think some of his best songs are the one where it's just him and guitar, and then he's got his uh, voice uh, on a couple different tracks, so he's his own, you know, uh, harmony or whatever. So I like that kind of songs the best. Um, if you've heard of anything by him, uh, one of his songs was in, I think it was the Royal Tenenbaums, but don't quote me on it. Um, and in fact, I think a couple of his songs got used in movies, now that I'm thinking about it, but I'd have to double check because it's been a while since those movies came out so I don't really remember <clears throat> anyway I really like his stuff so I've been listening to that whole shebang again and being sad that now I can't have any more music by him because he's not alive anymore cute cute not around. yeah anyway and then, then the other thing I've been listening to is a whole bunch of piano music mm-hmm. um, so I could go into all sorts of composers and stuff but let's just stick with lists because I really have been enjoying his stuff. List? Yeah. You know, some people, they like break their hands studying lists. I could imagine. That's some intense stuff. Some of that. Like, they, it's just like crazy. Yeah, I was like, oh, this is great. But I cannot, I don't, I can't, I physically can't move my hands that fast because of my hand problems. So. I can't even imagine being able to play as fast as those people play. Mm-hmm. I mean, yep. those people are crazy. So, piano players who play that stuff, you guys are cray cray. Take care of your hands. Props to you and soak your hands. Don't get, don't ha- use your hands for anything else. <laughs> you know, it's true. It's true. Anybody who has uh, a job or a, a craft with hands, take care of your hands. So. But I've been really enjoying this stuff, and um, some of it I I was uh, going through a list of songs and stuff. A lot of it I can't actually find online, um, I guess just because, um, you know, the only copies of it are uh, ones that are copyright by, you know, specific companies, so they don't let it be on YouTube or whatever, so... Um, so now I've got to go and scrounge up some CDs so I can listen to a larger, you know... Uh, array of his work because you know I want to listen to more of course I don't want to pay three thousand dollars or whatever for a giant set of discs <laughs> stuff either. I don't even know three thousand dollars sounds excessive but you know a CD set you don't happen to have any do you <clears throat> you want list yes I don't think I have any list okay but the best place to find classical CDs is, like, thrift stores. Yeah. Nobody else wants them, so there's usually a good selection, and they're it's usually too... cheap. Yeah. And I have found some really good recordings at thrift stores and yard sales. That's not a bad idea. I haven't been to the thrift store in a while, so it wouldn't have occurred. Yep. So, um, are you finished? Yep, that's it for me. I mean, I've got a, I've been listening to a whole ton of music, so I'm trying to keep it simple this week. Yes. As you know how it goes. Yes. But you. I uh, listened to um, one of my favorite clarinetists. Uh, oh. I don't know if I've mentioned... I don't know. I play clarinet. So, um, in case I didn't mention that before. My favorite clarinetist, her name's Sabina Meyer. I don't really remember where she's from. Somewhere in Europe, I think. Uh-huh. But um, she's so good. Yeah. She just, like, she makes it look easy and sound easy. Uh, you know, just like. Yeah. Is any of her stuff on YouTube? Could you link to it? I would guess so. Maybe. I, uh, like specifically, something. I was listening to Weber's clarinet quintet. Uh-huh. Karl Maria von Weber. Um, 
Yeah, and it's just it's always a treat to listen to it. And because the clarinet has such a wide range, it has it goes very low and it also goes very high. Right. And she can just do it just go from very low to the extreme highs of the range and make it sound pretty and so I was enjoying that. It came on the radio the other day and I was like, Oh, I should listen to that again. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, other than that, you know, nothing spectacularly new, but but still, that sounds that's fun. That's what I, I have to share. I was going to say, I hope you link to that, because I've been in a classical mood lately, so. Yeah. And our next segment is walks in the urban wilderness. How did you do this week? Well, I went on one hike. Okay. Uh, so I did get out, which was good. I have been meaning to ride my bike to work, but... I have needed to either take things to work or get things from work, so that needed my car. So it hasn't happened, but, you know. Yeah. Hopefully. I still have six days of school, so, like, okay. but who's counting? <laughs> six days and 12 hours, three minutes, 15 seconds, and counting. <laughs> you think the kids count down? <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, it's true. Us teachers, we're ready for summer. <laughs> I was going to say, I know too many teachers to know to not know better. Yeah. Um, what about you? How have you done? Um, I did great. Um, I did another full day of gardening on Tuesday, and uh, I've been working out in the garden, and I got an extra walk in. One extra walk, yes. So I feel really tired. <laughs> so I feel like... That's a general good sign that I've been working out enough is when my body hurts. Mm -hmm. Yay! Success! So, I feel like I met my goals for this week. And I, I've been actually kind of worried because it, uh, it's starting to get hot again and just working all day in the garden is really hard when it's like over 90 degrees. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I gotta figure out. I think I just really what I gotta do is buy more shorts. I don't like shorts. Yes. Because they're ugly. And I just really don't like them. Uh, but I need to get some more. So Me too, I I oddly them. enough. We should go shorts shopping. Two pairs or something. I just, they always look bad. It's like, I just hate them. I don't know. So, uh, and then the styles that are in right now is very 80s and it's just like MC Hammer pants or something, and it's just like, I don't want to wear that. Thank you very much. So, I don't know. It just takes more looking to find something that I'm not going to hate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I need to do that. It's getting too hot to not. Too hot to not. Sorry. Yeah, you get, <laughs> like, and who's going to care when you're working out in the garden? Like, Nobody. Nobody's there except the lizard skins anyway. Right. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think we're in random remnants, not going to lie. What, do we have anything else? Uh, walks? And that's it. We, we, are, we always make it to random about the time we really start to random. So. <laughs> right? About the time when our braids can't handle the structure anymore. Pretty much. We're like, oh, whatever. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I wanted to tell you about something that I did this week that is kind of fun. <laughs> uh, so it's the end of the year, and my concerts are over. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the year, um, last couple of weeks, music teachers generally stop teaching. And I had somebody come up to me today and was like, so pretty, like, easygoing last couple of weeks or something? Because she has no idea what I do. Right. Because right. I was like, um, no, actually today what I was doing was washing trumpets. And none of my trumpets have been washed ever. And some of these are, like, 15 years old, maybe? Maybe? That sounds they like a really are gross. 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 Like, yeah. Gross. So, but it's really fun. I looked up a video on YouTube, How to Wash Trumpets. And um, I watched it, and I talked, to, oh, I, know, I talked to some of the elementary teachers, too. And, you know, so I didn't just watch YouTube videos. But, um, it's fun to, like, take the trumpets apart and... Um, it, I don't know. It's just interesting to see how they work and dry them out mm -hmm. and put them back together. So.
Um, your sound is dying. Oh, and there you go. Your video is completely dead now. Yeah, you're dying yeah. too. Okay. Your video's crap been out too. Yay! I guess we're done. Yes, I yes. guess this is gonna be it. <laughs> Bye. See you next time, guys. Our show notes are at Sisters of the Holy Fiber at Sisters of the Holy Fiber at dot wordpress dot com. Not at. There you go. Yeah. Whatever. See you guys next week. Bye. 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 Outtakes. The fact about the apparatus inside your mind. Yeah. Do 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 do